All right, welcome to my video today. Today, I'm uh, doing a little video on cool rooms and freezer rooms, and the title is gonna be, Equipment Operates Like Sugar Honey Iced Tea. So, you can use this. This is basically standard, like if you have problem equipment, um, and you got a service call, and it seems like you're there every other day, or you have another technician going there every other day, well, let's start with the basics, okay? Um, let's look at it and see if it was put in correctly the first time. So, start by looking at the room size, you know? Room size, now you can find load calculations on average or heavy usage for a room, whatever size you got, in online, on the internet, or in the back of a supplier's catalog. They'll have the basic outline for most cool rooms, wall thickness and whatnot. So you can get the just the basic BTU requirements of a room or a kilowatt requirements of a room out of that. So it's really easy to find. Number two, look at the condensing unit. Check the capacity. And if you're wondering how to do that, well, it's as easy as going up to the compressor and getting the information off the label of the compressor. You want to write down the model of the compressor and what refrigerant it's running on. Now you can Google it, or if you've got a supplier catalog, that carries that particular model of a compressor, um, it'll be in there, or you can actually phone the supplier and they'll give you, um, you know, the BTU uh, per hour it does at whatever temperature, saturated, um, or in watts and kilowatts, whatever you prefer to use. Um, so start and write that down, okay? Once you get that, you write that down at whatever evaporator temperature it, it needs to be. Once you have that number, you move on to the evaporator. Now you want to make sure, because you know a lot of guys in the past, they used to just grab bits of equipment here and there, used, old, whatever, and they used to stick it in and run it on a new condensing unit. So you'd have a, mi a, mis a mismatched set, um, and that really throws the system out of whack. And they move on, and, and of course another technician comes and inherits the the problems of that job and can, it can never get it to run right. Okay, so you want to look at the evaporator capacity as well, how much airflow it's doing, and what refrigerant it's running on. Okay, um, you can get most of the information from the supplier of the evaporator, just have to take a couple of pictures of it, um, and you can track that down quite easy. And moving on from there, you want to look at the metering device. Now, it's really important, um, you got Sporlin metering devices, uh, they don't use uh, cartridges or orifices. Some are sort of fixed, so you want to look at the BTU per hour capacity of that. Or if you've got a Danfoss or a Honeywell or you know whatever you got metering in there, an Alco valve, some of those take orifices. You want to figure out what orifice is in that metering device, all right, for whatever saturated temperature. Once you write down all that info onto a piece of sh uh, paper, you can actually go back and look at all the specs to make sure they all match up. They should all match up because if you don't and one is out of whack, well, obviously that's the problem and that's why everybody keeps going back to this room or when it gets hot, it doesn't work right. You know, in the wintertime, some of this, this gear that's set up wrong will work okay. But once it gets hot and it's under stress, that's when you have all these callbacks and problems. And the, the trick is tracking down which piece is wrong. You know, sometimes you might go through this whole thing and go, well, it all matches up. And what could be is something as simple as when the guy was soldered in the metering device, he used like a butane torch that didn't have enough heat and he overdid the metering device and kind of partially cooked it. And all these years later, you're trying, finally finding out that the valve is cooked and you just need to replace that. Sometimes it's that, but once you get into doing, you know, an inspection like this to figure out what the problem is, you usually find little things like that. And it gives you a good look at all the bits and pieces. Also, just, just a heads up, special considerations on keg rooms operating at zero degrees Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit. Most keg rooms operate at that temperature because they don't want foamy beer, okay? But the EVAP coil must have electric defrost or some sort of defrost because um, it can't rely on off-cycle defrost. So if you got a, a keg room that's not operating, keeps freezing up or whatnot, or the guy keeps saying that it's foamy beer because you set the thermostat at two degrees, well, look into the fact that you gotta set them up slightly colder and make sure they have a defrost. All right. So I hope this helps somebody out there. I know, uh, I know, we all battle through it at one one time or another. Um, but yeah, start with the basics. That's that's my advice for you. All right.
Cheers. Yep. Ooh, no! There you are. <laughs>